Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. My dear respected elders, brothers and sisters, and the viewers of the Daily Reminder Network, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa usalli wa usallimu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen nabiyyina wa habibina wa qurrati a'yunina Muhammad ibn Abdullah alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi afdalu salati wa atammu taslim amma ba'd all praise and thanks be to almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is our creator, sustainer, nourisher, protector and curer we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his choicest of blessings and salutations upon our beloved master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members, his companions, and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyamah. MashaAllah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his blessings upon this gathering and may he make this gathering a gathering where the angels shroud us with their wings the sakina tranquility of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends upon us and the rahmah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala envelops us and may he the almighty make high mention of us in the seven heavens inshallah for tonight's heart softener we will be touching on hubbu dunya it is another type of love but it is not a love or a type of love that is encouraged, but rather it is a type which has been discouraged. It is not praiseworthy. On the other hand, it is blameworthy. And that is the love for this materialistic worldly life. Allahu Akbar. Hadith is in Abu Dawood. Thawban radiallahu anhu states that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, the narration goes along the lines of these words that nations will gather. Nations will gather just as how they will gather and they will start inviting one another. Just as how people invite one another to partake of a meal. Just as how they invite one another to partake of a meal. Nations will call out and invite people. They will call out to one another. And why will they call out to one another? They will call out to attack the Muslim Ummah. Allahu Akbar. And at that time, somebody from the gathering asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, will the Muslim Ummah be few in number at that time? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stated that nay, the Muslim Ummah will be like the froth of the sea. They will be so numerous in number, they will be like the froth of the sea. But, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have taken the fear of the Muslims away from the enemy. The enemy will no longer fear the Muslims. And also, wahan will be cast in the hearts of the Muslims. The Sahaba, Ridwanullah ta'ala, alayhi majma'een, they asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, what is wahan? What is al-wahan? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then clarified that wahan is love for this materialistic worldly life and also the fear of facing death. Allahu Akbar. We would start to love this dunya and we would, fa we would fear to face malakul maut. Look at this beautiful piece of poetry that was articulated by our beloved Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah. He says, إِنَّ لِلَّهِ عِبَادًا فُطَنَا إِنَّ لِلَّهِ عِبَادًا فُطَنَا طَلَّقُ الدُّنْيَا وَخَافُ الْفِتَنَا نَظَرُوا فِيهَا فَلَمَّا عَلِمُوا أَنَّهَا لَيْسَتْ لِحَيٍّ وَطَنَا جَعَلُوهَا لُجَّةً وَاتَّخَذُوا صَالِحَ الْأَعْمَالِ فِيهَا سُفُنَا Inna lillahi ibadan futana. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has intelligent slaves. Talaqu dunya wa khafu fitana. They abandon this dunya, they abandon this worldly life, wa khafu fitana, and they were cautious of the fitna, of the trials and calamities of this dunya. Another Arab poet, he says, Khalli dhunuba sagiraha wa kabiraha. Leave all sins, whether they be minor sins or major sins, leave sins completely. Be like a person walking down a thorny path, taking precaution at every corner and at every turn because there are thorns all over the place. 
Do not look down upon any deed, whether it be a good deed or a bad deed. For in al jibala min al hasa, because indeed mountains are made up of tiny little pebbles. Coming back to the main point. Those intelligent slaves of Allah, they would have abandoned this worldly life and also uh, they are cautious of the fitna of this worldly life, the trials and calamities of this worldly life. They had a look at this worldly life. And then when they realized that this worldly life is not a permanent place for those who are truly alive. They made it a transitory station that they are crossing. They made it a transitory stage. And they took righteous actions as a mode of conveyance to cross this temporary stage onto the permanent and eternal akhirah. So the cure, my dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam, the cure for curing hearts that have been afflicted with love for this dunya or those hearts that have been immersed in the love for this dunya is none other than, is nothing other than the remembrance of death. For the more we remember death, as it is in accordance to the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hadith is in Tirmidhi, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he states that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, Akthiru dhikra hadhi min ladhat. Make excessive remembrance of the destroyer of pleasures. Make excessive remembrance of the terminator of pleasures. For the more we remember death, the more we make excessive remembrance of death, that remembrance will shatter the fake wails of pleasure that this dunya adorns herself with. The more we remember death, the more we remember akhirah, and the more the love for this temporary life will start to decrease in our hearts. Because the life of this dunya is very, very short. Allahu Akbar. It is extremely short. Our salafun as salih our pious predecessors, they say that the life of this dunya is like a dream. It is like a dream. When a person who is sleeping, the minute he wakes up, what does he think of that dream that he witnessed? Nothing. It's just a mere dream. Likewise, when Malakul Mouth comes and stands in front of us, when we taste death, this worldly life will be nothing other than a dream. We would think at that time, oh, what a loss. I should have used that short life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me with to secure beautiful investments that would secure a good life for me in the akhirah. Let me give you a small calculation. A calculation that would make you realize how futile this worldly life is. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said that the lifespan of my ummah, my ummah, my nation is nothing other than between 60 and 70 years. Our lifespan is between 60 and 70 years. If someone were, especially in our times, if someone were to live past 70, it's actually considered a miracle these days. So the lifespan of this ummah is between 60 and 70. Let's take an average individual who, if, he, if, Allah, if Allah the Almighty has blessed him with a lifespan of 60 years, 60 years, how long do you think he spends in sleep? An average adult, he spends about 8 hours every day, 8 hours in the sense, 6 hours perhaps at night, and if he were to take a siesta or an afternoon nap, all of it included, 8 hours per day. So 8 hours out of 24 hours is one third. So out of 60, if we were to minus one third, that means 20 years of our lives we spend sleeping. 20 years of our lives. How many years have we got remaining? 40 years. Out of these 40 years, let's minus the age that we have not attained puberty in. Because of course, an individual, it is only after he has attained puberty that he is held accountable for his deeds. So let's take it at an average, even though these days people attain age at a younger age. Let's take it at 15 years. So minus 15 from that 40, you are left with how much? 25. 25 years. From those 25 years, let's say the time we spend eating and drinking, breakfast, lunch, dinner every single day, we can't live without food. 
So let's minus the time we spend, we spend on food, on eating, consuming food. Let's keep it at five years. Out of 25, five years. Minus five, we're left with 20 years. Now out of these 20 years, every day, an average adult, how many hours does he spend at work? Let's keep it at an average for about eight hours, even though there are workaholics who spend much more time at work. Let's keep it at eight hours. Okay, eight hours and at a random, let's minus 10 years from that 20 years that we have. How many years are we left with? 10 years. Now from these 10 years, we need time to spend with family, recreational activities, perhaps a few trips, visiting people, going out, spending time with friends. Oh, the time on social networks, online, all of these things, minus everything. Let's keep it at a five years for all of that, spending time with the family and etc. How many years are we left with? Five years. Allahu Akbar. And even that five years might go away. We might spend it in something. But I have a question. Can we not even at least devote that five years for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In ibadah? After all, that is if we live for 60 years, what guarantee or can any one of us guarantee now, can I guarantee that I live until 60, until the ripe age of 60 or 70? Can you guarantee? None of us. Perhaps before we reach home, we don't know. Malakul mouth may be at the doorstep waiting to welcome us. But at an average of 60 years, all we have got left behind is five years. So my dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam, let us make the best use of the time that we have before it slips away from within our fingers. Let us spend as much as time possible securing good deeds for the Akhirah. Let us purge this love, this evil love that we have for this materialistic dunya from our hearts because many of us sadly including myself we hanker from morning to evening running behind this dunya we hanker running behind this dunya amassing millions building houses buying cars none of which is haram but we need to get our priorities straight are we going to live forever and ever in this dunya yeah you may have the most expensive motor vehicle you may own a huge mansion looking over a river or a mountain or whatever but then in a short span of time malakul mouth is going to come visit you and you are going to be carried to your grave without your motor vehicle without your mansions without all of your wealth nothing you can't take anything and at times even the shroud that will be put on you may be, may be purchased from someone else's money unless and of course you've already brought the sh bought the sh shroud and kept it ready for yourself you may adorn yourself with designer brands but on that day you will go with a plain white sheet of cloth Allahu Akbar and when they place you in the Qabr nothing not even your family your children your loved ones your beloved wife no one yeah they will weep they will cry but at the end of the day they are going to leave you all alone in that pit to meet your fate and what will be with you? What will accompany you on that day? Nothing other than your a'malu saliha. So just as how our beloved Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah states in that poem I mentioned in the beginning, let us take or let us make righteous actions as a mode of conveyance to cross over this transitory stage onto the eternal akhirah where we shall enjoy perpetual happiness, eternal happiness. We will never ever experience any hardship, any sorrow or any sadness. So let us make use of the time because time is valuable. Let us make use of the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with to secure the best of deeds so that we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a state where He will be pleased with us. May He the Almighty forgive all of our sins. May He accept our good deeds and may He help us make the best out of this month of Ramadan and may he unite us in the gardens of Jannah just as how he united us here this night. Wa akhir da'wai alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakumullahu khair.